Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Gaughan? Here. Mr. McGough? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held February 26, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, minutes of the Scranton-Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority's regular board meeting held February 20th, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held February 26th, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held February 26th, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Any clerk's notes? Mr. Nothing, Mr. McGough. Uh, are there any announcements or comments from council? Yes, I, 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 have, I have one, Mr. McGough. Um, Telespond is going to hold a chicken barbecue dinner on April 27, 2014 at the state Stanislaus PNC Youth Center. Uh, tickets have to be purchased ahead of time and they must be purchased by April 17th. If you're interested in tickets, please contact Lorraine at 570-961-1950. Thank you. Just one also. Um, this Friday, tomorrow, um, from 4.30 till 7.30, the Dante Club will be having a haddock fish dinner. Um, the cost is $12 per plate, and takeouts are available. Um, the Scranton School District is raising money in the fight against autism. Uh, the event is called Strikes Against Autism. It will be held Saturday, April 19th at the Southside Bowling Lanes from 12 to 2 p.m. Tickets are $12 and can be purchased at the door. All money raised benefits autistic support classrooms in the school district. There is also a contest being sponsored by the Greater Scranton Board of Realtors through the website myscranton.org. Uh, participants are asked to tell their story about why they love the city of Scranton, why they love living here and working here. Um, you are to submit a video explaining why you love Scranton for the chance to win a $1,000 prize or one of the weekly prizes of $100. You can upload your video on myscranton.org and check the website out for more details. Um, and also there is the 11th annual Spring Fling uh, being sponsored by the West Scranton Black Sheep. Um, it is April 5th from 6 to 10 at the Taylor Hose Company, 614 Union Street in Taylor. Um, door prizes, 50-50 drawings, basket raffles, and more. Um, all proceeds from this fundraiser will go directly toward the Black Sheep Children's Fund. This fund gives aid to families with children under the age of 18 who have been diagnosed with an illness. And that's all I have. Thank you. I have two. Uh, first, council did meet this evening at 5 o'clock in an executive session um, with the city solicitor, at which time we received information about a possible, about poss potential litigation. Um, just wanted to make that known to, to everyone. Also, uh, the regularly scheduled meeting for April 17th is going to be rescheduled to Wednesday, April 16th. Um, April 17th is uh, Holy Thursday and we felt that it could be a conflict for many people and therefore we are rescheduling to Wednesday evening as opposed to Thursday. And that's all. Fourth order, citizens' participation. 
Well, apparently we don't have anyone who wishes to address council since <laughs> no one signed the uh, sheet, but uh, I, I will throw it out there if there's anyone who does wish to address council. Mr. Spragley. My mother always told me, sign very little and you'll be happier in life. <laughs> Good evening. You, you threw a real zinger at us when you talk about the pension. We know the pension is was $112 million under. Now they think they're going to have litigation. That means the unions are going to bring litigation against the city, I presume. I know you can't talk a lot out of it because nobody knows much about it, other than the fact it's going to the courts again. Now, if they tack on that other $22 million on top of that, that is one heck of a bite, the city. The city can't do it. We really can't afford. It's getting so bad that we can't even afford to have anybody working for the city if they get through with all these, pen, uh, these litigations. I also was told that uh, you couldn't sell a property in the city without the union approving it because they got to lean against all the properties. So I don't know. Actually, the unions are running the city. You just are following suit. It's a shame it got to this point. But I'm glad that Mayor Courtright has finally said he's going to fight for that seat on the Scranton Re Redevelopment Authority. When council appointed me that seat, they said, if you want to go out and fight for it, and since I had the heart attack, I couldn't put on brass nickels to go down there and fight for it. <laughs> but unfortunately, that uh, Scranton Re Redevelopment Authority has really bypassed a lot of their own rules. I remember when, uh, well, maybe, uh, five months ago or four months ago where you said that most of the people on that board shouldn't have been appointed. They were supposed to have a, a little period in between before they could be reappointed. And I remember that was written off by your, the lawyer. Well, apparently, maybe some of them other people could be replaced on that board too that was appointed illegally or shouldn't have been on the board. I'm not going to get into a lot of finances because there's no sense into it. The paper will probably read, come out with it and I can read it in the paper. But I can tell you one thing. We cannot afford to borrow more money to pay for 130 or $140 million worth of <coughs> litigation by the unions. We just can't afford it. Then you think, you always said you want to get rid of the parking garages to sell them off. The only way to really sell them off is declare bankruptcy. And then they'll do the same thing they did with the Hilton. I mean, at the Hilton, the mall. They'll put it up for sale. Real fast like. You're the cash cow that keeps them parking garages from being sold. So if you want to get rid of them, you figure a way to declare bankruptcy some way. Because we're heading down that road now anyway. It's just a shame. It's a shame that the Democratic Party has done that to the city with their endorsements. You have to blame the Democratic Party. No one else has been in control of the city for as long as they were and watched it go down the tubes. The last Republican we had was Connors, and he left with two million in the till. When Doherty came in, they stripped the city of everything they could, and councils went along with it until we hit this point. And at this point, we are close to bankruptcy. The only reason it stopped us from going bankruptcy is that you don't want to. But the federal court said you can declare bankruptcy, no matter what the state says. So if it comes to that point, we're at the point where we can't afford to live in this city. You should go that route. I don't approve of it. I don't like it. But it might be the only log logical course to follow. Like you say, I live on my pension, and I hate to see people lose their pension or deny a, a basic living wage. I believe in them two things, a living wage and a pension for everybody that works. And that's how it should be. And you should have, when people were doling out all these good deals to everyone, 
They should have thought of what they were doing for the future. Because there's going to become a point where they won't get a pension. Or they won't even get a living wage. And that's a bad point. You've got to keep within a budget. Scranton's budget is completely gone, so there's no sense even getting out and saying anything about it. Whatever happens will happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishes to address council? <clears throat> Good evening, council. Dave Dobson, Good resident. Good um, what of this uh, litigation here? Is it something I didn't read in the paper today? Uh, is it something to do with the unions taking us back to court? What's that? Like the Andy just spoke of? Uh, or or is, it's just that deal with uh, the housing authority? <laughs> is that what yeah. was discussed? Mr. Dobson, uh, we gave you the information that we're able to. That, that you were able to. Okay. Well, I'll try to find out more for next week. Um, Last week I spoke about the utility damage to the streets with their running pipelines and so forth. And uh, those are the potholes that I'm concerned with, not winter damage. I, I mean, they do have to be fixed, but uh, my major concern here is that they don't just sneak out of town and uh, at the end of this year you're going to be driving over the same street that needs repair uh, we have to start holding them to task it's improper for the money to come out of our pockets or out of the uh, city coffers because we obviously don't have it and uh, as far as the uh, comments on the chamber and Mr. Amoroso. I mean, I'm willing to listen, but it is the same thing basically that Frank Joyce had described our last councilman. Uh, he pretty much had most of the uh, most of it nailed on the uh, the hammer on the nail, and uh, it's not new information. It's good it's out there, but. The chamber has not been op operating in our better interest in Lackawanna County for years. Now they're building another business park up in Jessup. Uh, how many more businesses are going to be attracted out of Scranton? Uh, and eventually you have to jump in your car just to get uh, and, and drive 10 miles just to get uh, get something that you might need it's uh, a shame it's a shame but uh, I don't see why uh, obviously business association should be trying to establish new businesses cutting down uh, forest land and, and uh, uh, doing all these developments and owning property uh, it's it's improper I, I feel they, they've really extended their purpose. Uh, it's supposed to be an association of merchants and business businesses to uh, further the, the uh, city and and they turned into the greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce and now we have this situation like uh, last two weeks we heard about uh, uh, the uh, VaxServe and Diverse uh, which was their former name moving to uh, tax exempt business parks and uh, once again, I'm, I'm just reiterating on the trash fees, we need to start collections and uh, more or less like NCC just sat on it. I was there and I owed a trash fee one year. I was right in front of them. I was paying up uh, property tax on a property that I had acquired and I owed the money uh, for back year and uh, 
they never notified me that I even owed the garbage fee. Then on top of that, they reported me to a, uh, a credit agency, and I had a bad mark on my credit for seven years after that. So uh, we have to more or less do it within our house, and even if you had to hire people to do it, if you could get more money in that way, and certainly having somebody add, adding on a bunch of fees and fines on top of it, uh, not doing that would be a big help. And uh, okay, I'm gonna mention once again trade packs. The, uh, it's a national issue, but so many of the working class have lost their wages and or gone backwards in wages that it's really impossible. It, think of all the wage taxes uh, that Scranton could be collecting and so forth, and uh, it's just shameful. Please call your Congress and tell them to stop the trade packs. We don't need them. We don't need any more people unemployed. And the Supreme Court just once again authorized uh, more campaign spending in an unlimited, so they get the golden parrot. Bok, bok. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher. Good evening. Uh, first off, I would like to thank you for getting the uh, Amoroso briefing posted to the uh, City Council page of the web, the city's website. Uh, and speaking of that, I, I would just like to note one, one other issue that I have with it, um, which is the, I don't remember the, the exact terminology, I didn't write it down, I didn't think of it until I was coming in tonight, but the collection officer who's going to make sure that we, we get all the revenue that we're due, um, I would like to say that if we did honest budgeting uh, and didn't throw in a lot of... Uh, wishful thinking, we wouldn't need that person. The whole reason we don't attain the, a lot of the revenues is that we've overestimated wildly, and we've done it for year after year after year in the same accounts. Uh, so uh, start thinking about November, December, and, and doing some honest budgeting if we make it that far. And then I would also like to say that I believe our so-called tax fee, or our trash fee, is really a should be a tax. If the 75% of us who pay our trash fee are paying for 100% of the costs, then we're being taxed to cover those other people. Now, it would be a, it's not just wordsmithing because if it was a tax, we could at least put it on our income taxes and deduct it and get maybe a, a few pennies back. but. That $300, unless somebody can prove otherwise, and I have asked, I've asked for all the costs associated with, uh, with the, that department, the, the equipment, maintaining the equipment, uh, and what we collect, and how many rate payers there are, and I get no answers. So I can only assume that's because it's, a, it's really a tax and not a fee, which is supposed to be f to cover the services rendered. Uh, and then that, again, gets me back. I'll ask it again. I probably won't get the answer, but I will get a right to know in one of these days. And that is, how many properties have, rental registration properties have been registered, and how many have been inspected? Anybody? I do not have that information. Okay, and, and what council person, that's... It's, um, I think it would be both myself and Councilman Wexler, as far as the the money coming in part would be with Mr. Wexler, and as far as the inspections, that would fall under OECD. Why would it fall under OECD? Community, it's community issue. Oh, well, it's not OECD. Right, community development. Yeah, which I, I did notice in the paper today, we're getting cut by another roughly half million dollars next for the next year. Uh, okay. Last week, I asked a couple of questions on the, uh, again, on Mr. Amoroso's briefing. And 
I'd like to share maybe a little bit more. I will leave this paper with you. It's something from uh, uh, OlshanLaw.com and talking about Chapter 9 bankruptcies uh, because uh, I, have a, I have a real concern about the way Mr. Amoroso is planning to uh, fund the pensions with dedicated revenue and I asked if that was considered a revenue bond and, and I got no response last week and I, to be honest, I don't know the answer but I would really like the answer to that. And then he never stated, he said he was going to bring the, uh, uh, the 22 million into the budget but he never said how. And if it's, if it's the same thing as he's planning to do with the pension which is a dedicated portion of the property tax, uh, then I, I wonder how, if those are in fact considered revenue bonds, and I'll read it a few sentences to you in a moment, that we won't get money from anybody else because if you start, if you don't bring everybody in at, the, at roughly the same time in the same way and ask everybody to sit down and listen to what they can really expect to come in and how that should be distributed and who wants to you know, pony up and have equalized cuts, then um, I don't think treating one class of debtor better than another is going to get win us any friends and influence any of the credit market to give us loans. So this, again, I don't know, but it says, unlike general obligation bonds, may I finish this sentence? Please. Thank you. Um, Unlike general obligation bonds, special revenue bonds receive special treatment in Chapter 9 by generally, one, preserving any lien securing such bonds post-petition, and two, requiring the post-petition payment on such bonds during the pending Chapter 9 case if special revenues are available. Um, I will be back on Blight next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hello. I apologize for not signing in uh, my first council meeting. I was unaware of the protocol. Um, my name is Tim Telfer, and I work for SmartWatt Energy. And uh, I'm here to basically let you know about a couple of the Act 129 programs that are uh, um, available through PPNL uh, utilities. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the utility program rebates. But I um, figured it was a good time to uh, come down here because there are a couple of programs that just came out recently that are specifically tailored towards government buildings and uh, housing, authority, uh, housing authority buildings. Um, the first one is uh, the Housing Authority Building. It's a low-income, master-metered, nonprofit uh, program. So it's specifically tailored towards housing authorities. We've done a lot of work with uh, a lot of housing authorities in the state. And the incentives are um, a lot of free uh, LED light bulbs for a lot of the tenants of those buildings, a lot of free uh, upgrades of lighting fixtures, and some really good incentives for LED um, exterior lighting as well. I just wanted to make you uh, let everybody know uh, uh, what, what's available out there in those niche markets. And the reason I'm actually here today is uh, one for that, and the other one is as of earlier this week, um, PPL also came out with a limited time um, offer for free LED wall packs, exit signs, and motion sensors for any government or nonprofit building. Um, the catch to this program is it would have to be installed and documented by May 9th of this year. So there's basically four weeks um, to take advantage of this program. So I just wanted to let everybody know uh, what's available out there and um, I can have some flyers here I can leave for you. Please give me a call with, any, with anything you have and basically we can try to get as much uh, upgraded uh, in this next three or four weeks as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to address council? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Wexler. Thank you, Mr. McGough. Um, just, a, just a couple things. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Scranton Tomorrow and the owners of Posh uh, for uh, bringing us all together on Tuesday night with the, uh, the mayor and the administration and some members from city council and Mrs. Reed 
uh, we were able to meet a lot of the downtown uh, business owners. Um, and these are people that have made a commitment. They have skin in the game. Uh, and I, I did not know a lot of them, to be honest with them. A lot of the businesses are not places that I, uh, that I frequent, like uh, Steamtown Yoga. Um, so uh, I would like to congratulate them for their commitment, and we also made a commitment to them that we would uh, try to help them out whenever we can. Um, <clears throat> on Monday, which is April 7th, I believe, um, Chief uh, DeSarno from the Fire Department will be attending the North Scranton uh, neighborhood Association meeting, which is held in the Holy Rosary Auditorium at 7 p.m. Uh, this is a commitment that uh, the chief made to me uh, that he would attend that meeting and he's following through and I'd like to uh, thank him for that. Uh, and one issue that was brought up last week was about some reporting um, that we have not been providing. Uh, this would be the information from the single tax office for monthly comparison reports. Um, the uh, We have been in contact with the uh, tax collector and we will be starting uh, issuing those report re reading those reports when they become available to us thank you mr. McGough thank you um, just one very brief comment um, mr. Spragley brought up about the Scranton redevelopment authority appointments and something that's continued to bother me with that authority is is its solicitor um, Carl Greco has it's been widely reported in, in the newspapers that he owes um, large amounts of back taxes. Um, these were federal liens that were owed. Um, as I stated before, City Council um, chose not to appoint somebody. Actually, they, they rescinded their application, who would have been a good person for an appointment to an authority um, because of that issue. Um, if the protocol is going to be that we're not going to allow anyone who owes back taxes to serve on a board in a capacity where they won't receive any income, um, I certainly think that somebody who is, such as Mr. Greco, as the solicitor for the authority, should be removed. And I hope that the new members of the authority, as well as the current members, will consider looking into this matter. Um, not only does Mr. Greco owe a large amount of money in back taxes, he also led the charge on the eminent domain case that cost the authority hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, with trying to take away two longtime established businesses, that being Buona Pizza and um, the, the uh, wiener shop as well. Yeah. Coney Island. <laughs> I just call it the wiener shop because them and Keystone are the two best in the city. Um, but if you look at that, he's being allowed to, to stay there and continue to, to draw a salary while members are being held to a different standard. So I hope that the members of that authority will look into that issue. And if... Mr. Greco did in fact pay all of the taxes, federal, state, city. Um, he should come forward and, and, and provide that to the public because that hasn't been done. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Yes, uh, just briefly, I too would like to, uh, to thank the uh, Scranton tomorrow for uh, getting the administration, city council members together with the downtown business people. It gave us a great opportunity to as Joe said, meet the people downtown that, uh, you know, a lot of us don't see on a regular basis. It gave us a good opportunity to hear some of their concerns and, uh, you know, to work together with them in the future. Uh, they are our future here in the downtown. They've been here a long time. Uh, they, they're keeping us together, and we're looking forward to more uh, communication and more meetings with them in the future. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, just one brief comment. Uh, this Sunday, April 6th, is the Scranton Half Marathon. Um, it is going to be a wonderful event. I'm excited about it. I would hope that everybody gets out um, to cheer on the um, over 2,500 people that have signed up to run in this event. And the 2,500 people that have signed up are from all over the United States. Um, 19 states are represented. And they will be in the city of Scranton on Sunday. Actually, starting tomorrow, they'll all be coming in. All of the hotels are booked. Um, it's a really great event. If you need more information about the half marathon that will take place this Sunday, uh, you can get it at www.scrantonhalf.com. It will be kicking off at 9 a.m. down at Memorial Stadium. I'd also like to thank all of the people that put that together. Um, I think that we need to do more <laughs> events like that. 
those are the type of events that attract people, not just in this area, to the downtown and to the neighborhoods, but from all over the country. And I think uh, this event is going to be one that when we look back, it's just going to continue to grow. Thank you. Uh, I'll continue on that, uh, on the half marathon. Um, I was going to mention that it does start at 9 o'clock. However, people will start assembling around Scranton High School or Memorial Stadium probably around 8 o'clock. Most runners get there early, so there will be a um, large number of people in that area from 8 o'clock. And then at 10 o'clock, from 10 until 2, Providence Road is going to be closed. Um, as, as the race ends, they are, they are closing down Providence Road uh, so that the runners and families and whatever can mingle. Um, and also, uh, there are three establishments there that are um, catering to the, to the runners. Um, so just so you know that if you're traveling in the, that area that you may be inconvenienced. Also, with the race starting at 9, it does run out into out, uh, Providence Road towards Green Ridge and goes down into the plot section, loops around the plot, and basically comes back to North Washington Avenue into the city, and then Cedar Avenue, Adams Avenue, and Cedar Avenue down to Elm Street where they get on the trail uh, along the river and then run the trail um, back toward Scranton High School. So those areas for a period of time, uh, traffic will be affected. So just be aware, uh, anyone traveling on you know, Sunday morning that um, you know, traffic is going to be disrupted in certain areas. And uh, just to also add that of the 2,500 runners, um, I think it's over 1,500 of them are female, which is um, becoming, it's not unique, but it's becoming more the norm for distance running. Um, more and more females being involved. And also, I, I think it's over 1,300 are people doing their first distance run. So it, it, it is going to be a unique event. Um, and. I wish I was able to participate. Uh, due to some issues, I am not. But uh, my daughter and grandson and are both participating, as are many, many people in the Scranton area. So it will be a great event. Uh, you want to go out and cheer some people on, and you know, just uh, it's a it's going to be a great day. Um, just a, a, a brief about the was brought up about the presentation from Mr. Amoroso a few weeks ago. What M Mr. Amoroso gave to us um, was kind of a, I'll say, a, a guideline for what may occur. Uh, there were no hard proposals. There's, there's been nothing given to council in the form of a definitive proposal. And to comment on what Mr. Amoroso's intent was, um, I personally would not care to speculate on something that is not formalized. Um, and that may be the reason I'm, I'm reluctant to answer at least you know, part of the questions that are being asked. Uh, when, when there is a final proposal and there are you know, definitive parameters to those proposals, I think then council will, you know, begin to ask questions uh, um, as to how it will be implemented and, you know, what's best for the city as far as the implementation of any type of uh, program. But until then, as I said, I, I care not to speculate and hopefully we will be hearing again from Mr. Amoroso and from the administration with, you know, definitive proposals uh, for dealing with the, the economic situations that we have. And uh, I should also mention, I, I did not mention prior, 
Uh, next week, prior to the meeting, uh, there will be a public caucus with representatives from SAPA uh, to make a presentation. It's At this point in time, it's scheduled for 5 o'clock, but we are going to move that time to 5.30. And that caucus will be held here in council chambers. And uh, we will ask that ECTV also um, televise that part of that part of the the meeting and that is all 5b for introduction an ordinance abolishing and closing OECD accounts with Community Bank NA and First National Bank transferring the funds from those accounts to PNC Bank account listed below at this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. <laughs> On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5C for introduction a resolution appointment of Rosetta Walsh, 2710 Cedar Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505. As chairwoman of the board of the Scranton Parking Authority, Ms. Walsh will be replacing Kathleen Stella, who was removed from the board by letter dated January 22, 2014. Ms. Walsh will fill the unexpired term of Kathleen Stella, whose term is scheduled to expire on June 1, 2015. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. I should say that we did receive a resume from Ms. Walsh um, prior to the meeting. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction and resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with Knowles Associates LLC for insurance brokerage services for a period of three years from April 1, 2014 through March 31, 2017, and with Brit State National Insurance Company, Indian Harbor Insurance Company, XL Insurance, Altera American Insurance Company, and Safety National Insurance Company for city insurance coverages for the period April 1, 2014 through March 31, 2015. At this time, I'll entertain entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, um, I would also say that in caucus this evening, uh, Mr. Balzoni, the business administrator, did explain um, the, this resolution, also said that the administration is working with Knowles Associates to um, to determine the extent of coverage that's needed, what's needed, the liabilities that are concerned, so that um, we we do have proper coverage um, through or proper insurance coverage for the city. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of council number 12, 2014, an ordinance <coughs> amending file of council number 11, 1999, as amended, entitled amending file of the council number 9, 1935, as amended, an ordinance regulating the licensing of purchasers of scrap gold, old gold, silver, jewelry, clothing, and other valuable articles and providing penalties for the violation thereof by adding additional terms, increasing the licensing fee, increasing the penalties of violations thereof, providing for suspension of license, licenses, and modernizing the language thereof, and incorporating rules and regulations by further making amendments to increase the license fee in section two from $50 to $100 per file of council number 178 of 1992. Section one, codified in chapter 340, peddling and soliciting, Section 340-13A, fees and amending section 4A <coughs> to provide additional information to better identify the seller in the goods or article being sold, and section 5A to increase the penalties
for noncompliance with the provisions of this ordinance codified in the Administrative Code in Chapter 379, Secondhand Goods and Dealers at Section 379-4A and Section 379-5A and to change the department name from the Department of Community Development to the Department of Licensing, Inspection, and Permits throughout this ordinance. <coughs> You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. I would like to make a motion to take file of council number 11, 2014 from the table. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 6B, previously tabled, reading by title, file of council number 11, 2014, and ordinance, amending file of council number 74, 1993, as amended, entitled City of Scranton Zoning Ordinance of 1993, by changing the zoning map designation of the John J. Audubon School from R1A, medium low density residential, to INSG, general institutional in the central planning area in the eastern portion of the city of Scranton. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I make a motion to amend item 6B per the following amendment. This section is amended by changing the official zoning map designation of the John J. Audubon School, the premises, from R1A medium low density residential to INSG general institutional in the central planning area located in the eastern portion of the city of Scranton. This amendment of the official zoning map designations shall revert back to INSG to R1A in the, in the event that the premises are transferred to an entity that is not controlled by, in control of, or under common control with the entity that occupies the current existing INSG zone across from Mulberry Street, identified as parcel map number 157-140-10027. The zoning map designations shall be changed for the parcel map to 157-140-10028, more specifically described below. Second. <laughs> Are there questions on the amendment? Um, just for explanation for the public, um, if you recall, this was part of the legislation that this was part of a package of three pieces of legislation that came regarding the Audubon School and uh, potential development on that property. All this amendment does is it changes up the, the legal wording of it a little bit so that if somebody else were to purchase that property, it would revert back to the medium low density residential zoning that it currently is in. And for further explanation, um, this will also be tabled after it's amended to allow the other governing bodies to follow suit. And Mr. Begoff, I, I will be abstaining from voting on this uh, legislation uh, as an employee of Geisinger, um, just so there's no, you know, I don't know, implication of impropriety. Uh, is there any objection from council? Thank you, Mr. Laskin. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion to amend item 6B signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. And please record Mr. Loscom did abstain. Okay. Somebody has to move item 6B pass. Are we going to vote on item 6B? Yes. Okay. Um, Someone needs to move. Um, I move that item 6B as amended pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. I would like to make a motion to table item 6B as amended. Second. There is a motion on to, I, to table item 6B as amended and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order. 
7A for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption resolution number 41, 2014, accepting a contribution in the amount of $500 received by the City of Scranton from the Fraternal Order of Police, EB German Lodge number 2, for the Public Safety Manpower Initiative. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gorn? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, resolution number 42, 2014, appointment of Al Brokavich, 701 Newton Road, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as alternate number three member of the Scranton Housing Appeals Review Board for a term of five years to commence on March 20th, 2014. Mr. Brokavich's term will expire on November 24, 2019. I make a motion to amend item 7B per the following amendment. Second. Got to read it for you. I make a motion to amend item 7B by changing the expiration date of Mr. Brokavich's term from November 24, 2019 to March 20th, 2019. Second. Second. <laughs> On the question, all those in favor of the motion to amend item 7B signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. As chair for the committee on rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B as amended. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gorn? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B as amended, legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 43, 2014, appointment of Mario J. Bevilacqua, 713 Archibald Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Housing Appeals Review Board. Mr. Bevilacqua will be replacing Michael Trapper, whose term expired November 24, 2013. Mr. Bevilacqua will be appointed to a five-year term, which will expire on November 24, 2018. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gorn? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. I, before we adjourn, I would like to remind people that there will be a public caucus um, next week at 5.30, uh, dealing with the um, SAPA plan, um, and it will be in council chambers, or in council chambers and televised. Any other business? Motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Meeting is adjourned.